actors who bash Trump. Alsted White House strategist Steve Bannon has a new revenue stream from selling Steve Bannon fidget spinners for $7.95 a pop online. It's pretty smart as these are the most popular in the United States right now. It will probably give him some more money to wage his war on the losers that lead to his removal from D.C. Advertisement Leftists need comfort at times like these. Gift them this pacifying item that will give them something to do in between pulling down monuments. Or keep one for yourself! Exclamation mark the copy hawking the toys reads on Breitbart News website. The orange sports a picture of Steve Bannon on one side and the Breitbart logo on the other. It is the perfect way to trigger liberals. Maybe they will cry out white supremacist as they see these. Advertisement Long two minute spin time. Stress relief that fits in your pocket. Double sided printing with Breitbart logo. Proudly made in USA, the copy continues. Steve Bannon reassumed his post at Breitbart after he left D.C. He will be of more use to the Trump followers in the media because he can openly combat the globalists in the White House like Gary Cohn, Jared Kushner, and H.R. McMaster. Since then he has declared war on his former boss, attacking President Trump's Afghanistan speech and even going after the first daughter Iga and son-in-law Jared Kushner. This will not only pacify liberals, it will pacify those degenerates at SNL who choose to consistently attack Trump, while their skits of Hillary Clinton seem to be more of an homage. Let us not forget when Chevy Chase revealed the political game that is played by SNL a few years ago. The left will buy these to burn them and make videos of them burning them all while screaming Nazi. It will be hilarious. What do you think of Bannon's new revenue stream? Chelsea Clinton defends Baron Trump from shameful liberal attacks. Chelsea Clinton is a former first child. She knows what it's like to have to grow up in the spotlight. Well, she actually defended Baron Trump again after more slanderous words were thrown at him. Of course, this time it wasn't he solely liberals. Which is a shock in itself. Baron Trump, 11, was accused by an entertainment reporter for the Daily Caller of not dressing like he's in the White House. Advertisement the article features photos of the boy in his loafers, khaki shorts and t-shirt after a flight to Washington. Of course Chelsea Clinton has tried to look supportive of Barron because he is a child, yet she won't speak out against her supporters who continually bash him and his siblings. Chelsea Clinton did make a half-assed defense of Barron some time ago because of criticism and evil jokes about the boy. She even tweeted something that caused a SNL writer to be fired. Advertisement It's high time the media and everyone leave Baron Trump alone and let him have the private childhood he deserves, the daughter of Hillary and former President Bill Clinton posted on Twitter. Late-night comedian Chelsea Handler, a frequent critic of the American president, tweeted poor Baron. Other Twitter users were equally appalled and leaped to the youngest child of Trump's defense. Writer Ford Springer had wrote that Barron returning to the White House from New Jersey Sunday with the First Lady and the President. He said that Barron appeared to be boarding Air Force One to take a trip to the movies, not the White House. Springer the said that the youngest Trump doesn't have any responsibilities as the President's son but the least he could do is dress the part when he steps out in public. Clinton was classy for a split second, but it won't he last. She's still a moron when it comes to politics. What do you think of this? California voter fraud report throws monkey wrench in Hillary's popular vote win. Judicial Watch is a watchdog organization. They sent a letter to California in response to the fact that the state has 11 counties where the number of registered voters is greater than the number of voting age citizens. California voter fraud is real. The letter alleges California is not complying with federal regulations in maintaining accurate voter registries. Advertisement 
NVRA Section 8 requires states to conduct reasonable list maintenance so as to maintain an accurate record of eligible voters for use in conducting federal elections. Congress put into effect Section 8 of the NVRA to protect the integrity of the electoral process. This permits the names of ineligible voters to stay on the voting rolls hurts the purity of the electoral process and ruins voter confidence in the legitimacy of elections. As the top election official in California, it is your responsibility under federal law to coordinate California's statewide effort to conduct a program that reasonably ensures the lists of eligible voters are accurate. Advertisement The documents sent to California lists the 11 counties where the crimes occurred. Judicial Watch lays out the specifics. T. Here were more total registered voters than there were adults over the age of 18 living in each of the following 11, 11, counties, Imperial, 102%, Lassen, 102%, Los Angeles, 112%, Monterey, 104%, San Diego, 138%, San Francisco, 114%, San Mateo, 111%. Santa Cruz, 109%, Solano, 111%, Stanislaus, 102%, and Yolo, 110%. The letter notes that the percentage in LA country may be as high as 144%. Judicial Watch will be following the letter with legal action. They said that if the Secretary of State in California doesn't remove the ineligible people from the voter rolls, they will take action. They have given Padilla 14 days to respond and 90 days to fix the issues. Padilla has been one of the main voices in opposition to President Donald Trump's Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity. What do you think of this? Does this prove that liberals have to rely on California voter fraud? Breaking Loretta Lynch busted using grandmother's name as alias to hide dirty deeds. On Friday internet detective Kim.com dropped a huge bomb on Twitter. Kim disclosed an email Friday that outs Loretta Lynch for using an alias to make contact with DOJ officials. The Department of Justice cut loose hundreds of emails to the American Center for Law and Justice this week during the investigation of Obama's AG, Loretta Lynch and her secret meeting with former President Bill Clinton. One emails blatantly Loretta Lynch hiding her identity from Department of Justice officials. Melanie Newman from the Department of Justice leaked it in the email. And, A.G. Lynch, Elizabeth Carlyle, then issued a response with a thanks to all who worked on this. Advertisement Another message from May 29 to the Attorney General was sent to the Elizabeth Carlyle account. On Reddit, numerous users found out that Loretta used her grandmother's maiden name as her alias. The maiden name is Lizzie Carlyle. Loretta's grandmother's name is Lizzie Carlyle Harris. Loretta's mother's name is Laureen Harris Lynch. Below is a picture of her grandmother's death certificate. Kim.com requests that his subscribers discover much more on Lynch's alias Elizabeth Carlyle. It would seem that the deep state forgot to hide the reality that was in the emails they released to the ACLJ. The deep state is proving that they always behave like criminals. The fact that Lynch chose to use an alias shows that she knew what she was doing is wrong. The left is fighting so hard to commit crimes at every turn. What do you think of this shocking development? Should Lynch and the rest of her DOJ go to prison for the crimes they committed? Breaking Massive Social Security Fraud Discovered President Trump Furious Social Security has been an overused program for a long time. The program is in huge need of reform. The abuse of the program is compounding each day. Yes, Trump wants to preserve the benefits, but change must happen. Recent news is flooring Americans and revealing a scandal you wish could only be made up. Instead it has only confirmed the great problems SS faces and the challenge Trump faces. Advertisement 
an audit discovered that the SSA gave over $1 billion in benefits to people that aren't citizens, they don't have social security numbers and people that aren't eligible. This shows how much change is needed and how much money Trump could save us if we can fix this problem. This mismanagement is unreal. Over the last 10 years, the SSA has paid out $1 billion to 22,426 representative payees who did not have a social security number and whom the SSA did not follow its policy to get a paper application from. Unless it takes corrective action, we estimate SSA will pay about $182.5 million in benefits, annually, to representative payees who do not have an SSN or paper application supporting their selection, the inspector general said. Well, an inspector general also discovered that the same SSA doled out $853.1 million since 2004 to employees that were fired. The agency didn't keep the paper applications and didn't update the system once someone was fired. Advertisement This is the kind of abuse that has been going on in the federal government for years, particularly over the last eight years. Big spender Barack Obama seemed to be unwilling to make necessary cuts in our budget or to even evaluate where our money is going. This amount is astounding and very harmful for the American taxpayers. What do you think of this discovery? Do you think the people who were in charge of the SSA should be charged? Breaking Maria Chappelle Nod Al has just been removed. It has finally happened. Maria Chappelle Nod Al has been removed from her post. She absolutely deserved it as she was yet another liberal to call for the assassination of President Trump. Liberals are being welcomed to normal society. They suffer the consequences of their actions. Nadal is a state senator who called for Trump's assassination and has been successfully removed from her role. This was very quick after her deleted Facebook post and then the Secret Service investigation. Advertisement Maria Chappelle Nadal made the mistake of posting on Facebook that she hoped President Trump would be assassinated. Imagine a Republican saying this about Obama. That person would have been put in jail the next day. Tuesday morning, Senate Democratic Caucus leader Senator Gina Walsh said Maria Chappelle Nadal is a distraction to senators and released a statement saying she has been removed from all committees. It is important that the Missouri Senate conducts their work without distractions. With that in mind, Senator Chappelle Nod Al has been removed from her committee assignments. This will help to ensure the success of the Senate, and the state, going forward, she said. Advertisement Before her removal, she was a member of eight different committees. Well, that's all over now. With the constant stream of rhetoric, hate, and law-breaking by the left, it was overdue for one to face the consequences of their actions. She will be the first of many to be held responsible for their actions. The controversial comment by Chappelle Nadal, made on Thursday, prompted other lawmakers to call for her resignation. The comment was deleted shortly after, but a screenshot was already making the rounds on Twitter. The U.S. Secret Service investigated the post that read, I hope Trump is assassinated. What do you think about this? Did she get exactly what she deserved? Is this the example we were waiting on? Trump and Mitch McConnell's feud goes public with ugly leak to New York Times. President Donald Trump and Senator Mitch McConnell aren't friends. McConnell is a well-known globalist and establishment rhino. Trump is doing his best to beat the globalists. Trump has publicly and privately berated McConnell over his failure to rally his Republican members, who hold a slim 52-48 majority, into support of a repeal and replacement plan for the Affordable Care Act. And McConnell has expressed concerns that Trump, a newcomer to politics, is not educating himself on how governing works. Advertisement The New York Times said that the two haven't exchanged words in quite some time. Their conversations were never polite and have even been in screaming matches before. A lot of it was over McConnell's failures as a senator. For his part, 
McConnell is angry over Trump's threats to Senate Republicans who refuse to give him their complete backing and his criticism of Senate rules. The majority leader also has expressed doubts whether POTUS will be able to lead the party heading into the 2018 midterm elections. Some of McConnell's concerns stem from Trump's statements in the wake of the Charlottesville protests saying that there were good and bad people on both sides. Advertisement But while McConnell has the support of the other rhinos and senators that are globalists, in Kentucky, he only maintains an 18% approval rating. In that same poll, Kentucky voters approve of the president at 60%. That shows the truth in what Trump has been saying. McConnell is a traitor. The rift between the two leaders most threatens the GOP agenda, The Times notes, pointing to deadlines on raising the debt limit and a rewrite of the tax code as Congress scavels back into a regular working session next month. Trump's support of a Republican challenger to Senator Jeff Flake and he also supports another challenger against Dean Heller. He wants the GOP to win, but he knows that these senators are Democrats anyway. Lindsey Graham and John McCain are also on Trump's radar. Should the president make sure that we get in true conservatives, 